I'm a PhD student at University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, and today I will talk about cohomology of sheaves on quantiles. First of all, I would like to thank the organization of this event, also my advisor, and acknowledge the agents that supports my research campus. I must say that this is part of a joint work with my academic brothers, Caio Mendes and Jose Alvin. So let me give you uh, an overview of this talk. First, I will talk about shifts on topological spaces and on locales. This is already established in the literature. And then I will talk about shifts on quantiles. There are some attempts in defining it in the literature, but we are proposing a new one. In the second part, I will talk about shift cohomology first for the case on topological spaces, and then in the case of containers. And finally, I will talk about shifts again, and I will say, I will explain to you a notion of shifts on any small category with pullbacks. And I must say that our shifts on containers are not uh, a shift in this case. So first, what is a shift? on a topological space X. To, to define this notion, first we need to consider a poset category. And we consider this set here of all open subsets of X. So the objects in this category are the elements of the set. So they are open, open subsets of X. And the morphisms are given by the order relation. So in this case is the inclusion. And a shift with values in sets is just a functor from the opposite category that we are considering to set. And a shift is a shift if for each covering of an open set, we have, we have this equalizer diagram. And I put here what the arrows are doing in this diagram, but you do, need, do not need to worry about that. I just, I just want you to focus in these two things here, the, the common notion and the form of this diagram is always an equalizing one. And morphisms between sheaves are just natural transformations, and we will denote the category of sheaves uh, by this form here. To fix the idea of a shift, I want to give you an example. So the example is the shift of a continuous function. This is very classic. We take two topological spaces and consider the set of continuous functions from x, x, from x to y. And this function here, well, this set here can be, be seen as a kind of functor from this category to set. And what we must do, do to, to see it. In the objects, we so take open subsets and define this kind of set. And for the morphisms, we have the inclusions and we will define this application here. So we take continuous functions and take just the restriction, just the restriction by the, the open set here. It's not difficult to see that it will give us a fresh sheet, but I want to show you why this is a sheet. Say this is a sheet is the same thing that say this is an equalizer diagram. In other words, if we have continuous functions fi, such that this equalizer, this equality holds for our i and j, and j's, then there is a unique continuous function such that this equality holds. So when we restrict f to u i's, we give f i again. This happens for continuous functions, and that's why this is an example of a shift. And what I want to highlight here is that the, what the, this example gives us to us is that the continuity holds locally for UIs and UJs. And we have some kind of compatibility here that, uh, that is explicitly given by this equality. 
this property, the continuity that holds locally, also holds globally. This always happens for sheaves. We have uh, uh, a con uh, property that holds locally and it also holds globally. And now I recall again the definition of a sheaf. So notice that the, the points of the topological space is not used here. So we can consider the ambient of pointless topology, the locales. And a locale is a complete slatted such that this distributive law holds. And it's not difficult to see that the, the set of all open subsets of X with the inclusions give, a, give us an example of a uh, locale. And now we can define the notion of a, a sheaf here in a very similar way than before. So a pre sheaf is a sheaf if for each covering, now the covering, we for the covering use the joints here. We have this equalizer diagram again, and observe that we have to change the intersection by the mid operation. And I must say that this mid operation also gives a monoidal structure to the local to, to the locale, and this monoidal structure it is commutative, and we may be interested in, in think about monoidal structures that are not commutative. And how we do so? We can consider then the conteus. And a conteo is a complete lattice with a monoid structure where these two distributive laws holds. In particular, we want to consider semi Cartesian conteos where the unit coincides with the top element of the lattice. And again, the notion of shifts that we are proposing is very similar for them if we compare it with, with the case of locales. We have again the same kind of covering and this equalizer diagram where we just change the, the meat operation by the, the monoidal operation, uh, multiplicative operation, if, if you want. And here I give you some examples that we can consider to work with these sheets. First, we have locales, but we also have ex the extended positive real numbers, where we use the reverser order here. Uh, ideals of a commutative ring, and closed right or left ideals of a C-star algebra. All of them are examples of conveyors. And in, now I start the second part. I want to talk about shift cohomology. So in general, when we work with homological algebra, we want to work with a billion categories. And the category of shifts over a topological space is not an abelian category. But it's not a problem because we can turn this category into an abelian one by describing abelian groups axioms in terms of diagrams and how we do it. We must take shifts, F, and some markers. I will take an M that goes to F, Cartesian F to F, some markers that do this, and another one like this. And then we want to form commutative diagrams here to form the abelian groups objects. This diagram here will give us the existence of the inverse elements. This gives us the associative law. This gives us the existence of the identity element. And we also want a commutative law here. When we have all these, we have uh, abelian group object in the category of sheets. And we can consider a billion groups objects for any category with a terminal object and binary products. But here we are focused in this category of sheaves. If we take a morphism in, in, in sheaves in this category that commutes with these three arrows that we are taking before, then we can form the category of a billion groups objects that I denote by this. 
And this category is an abelian category and has enough injectives. So we can do a homological algebra, algebra because you can guarantee that the right derived functors exist in this context. And a theorem that I like about shift cohomology is the, the Hunt theorem. It basically says that the check cohomology with a coefficient on a specific shift is isomorphic to the De Han cohomology. The M here is to the nodes is moved manifolds. And using a lot of shift cohomology for in certain conditions, we have that the check cohomology coincides with the shift cohomology using the derived functors. So we can say that the Han cohomology is some kind of shift cohomology. And I want to replicate this kind of results for the case of shifts on Pompeius. So how we do it? We do exactly the same thing. So I, again, want to extract, extract the abelian groups objects in this category. And I need to verify if this is an abelian category that has enough injectives. These three conditions here are easy to prove. This category of abelian groups objects in the category of shifts, it will have a null object, byproducts, and kernels. These three conditions here are more difficult, and we have not completely verified it yet because we need a shiftification process to construct. So we take a fresh shift on Pompeius, and we want to transform it on a shift. This is what is called a uh, shiftification. And we also want that this, this functor be adjoined, adjoined to the, the inclusion functor. So we need this for, to prove the co the existence of co-kernels and to prove that this is AB5. To prove that it has generators is not needed so, and we are already checked this. For the ones that are not used with homological algebra, these two conditions here give to us that the category, the category has enough injectives. And supposing that everything we work as we would like, and I really believe that we that we work, I have a conjecture here that the hot child cohomology is some kind of cohomology of shifts for a uh, contail because, well, I don't want to give you the details here, but uh, I do believe that we we work and I believe that we work for other Kahomo's theory, but the hot child is what's giving me more evidence now. So I have now to talk about, uh, about the final part. And I have to introduce the notion of a shift for any small category with pullbacks. So to consider this, we first need a notion of a covering for the objects of this kind of category. And this notion of covering is provided by the Grotingic Pretopology. I put the definition here, but I ask you to don't worry about the, the details here. I just want to highlight that the pullback appears in the definition of the Grotendieck topology, and it also appears in the definition of a shift. And how? So if you have a category C, with that small and have two bags, a fresh shift of this form is a shift if for each k covering of an object of this category, we have this equalizer diagram again. The k here is provided by the Grotingic topology. And well, and the pullback appears here again. And I hope I have convinced you that our shifts on Conteos looks like a shift because we have a notion of a covering and we have this equalizer diagram. But why this is not a, a shift category in this sense? Because 
our coverings will not be a growth in GIP for the foliage. And also because the, the monoidal operation that appears in, in for the tails is not uh, a pullback in the full set category of tails. Sometimes it can be a pullback, for example, in the case uh, where the, the container is all local, but in general, it will not be a pullback, and that's why our shifts are not a shift category in this sense. But I don't think this is a problem. I think this is, can be seen as some kind of opportunity because now we can think about it, a notion of a shift that, that use some, some kind of, of category that has something that's more general than a pullback. So I will give you a sketch of what we are thinking right now, me, my advisor, and my academic brothers. We want to take a semi-Cartesian monoidal category. Semi-Cartesian means that the, the unit of the monoidal is the terminal object, the equal side. And then we define a good tensor. So some kind of tensor that's more general than a pullback. And we want that this also includes the container multiplication. And also this good tensor must be related with the, the, the tensor of the monoidal category. Once we have this good tensor, we want to replace the pullback that appears in definition of the protocol. The, the definition of a protegic protopology and in the definition of a shift by this good tensor. And we can ask him why we want to do this. Well, we have two much motivations here. The first one is to apply in other cohomology theories. So maybe there are many other cohomologies that are just an, a specific case of a shift cohomology if we have a bit more general notion of a shift. And remember that there are some more complicated cohomology like italic cohomology and crystalline cohomology. They are just uh, a specific case. They are examples of, of shifts cohomology considering categories with pullbacks. And in some ways, we can also relate these cohomology with k theories. And finally, Another aspect is to, to study the logical aspects of this category because, well, I have two, two minutes yet, so let me explain this. Um, the, the, this notion of shifts for categories with pullbacks could lead, to, lead us to the notion of gluten topos, and gluten topos leads to the notion of a topos, elementary topos. And the elementary topos have uh, intuitionistic internal logic. And now for these categories, when we don't have more, more the, the pullbacks, but these now good tensor that is related with the container multiplication, we hope this new generation generates something that's more general than agrotegic topos. And then we can define something that's a bit more general than the elementary topos, and we hope this will have some kind of linear internal logic. And then I finally just put here some preference for books of, of shift cohomology and shift theory. And of course, there are many others. I just put a few here. And here are some reference papers that considered that considered a shift on containers before. And thank you all for the attention. Uh, thank you very much, Anna Luisa, for the talk.